So you can go to the repository of the of, of notes repository. And in notes repository on uh, under section NBP. These are the ones that I'm going to start working with. So you can get these things on your computer and start working with me right now, if you want to. Okay, so, so what is an array made up of? Am I recording? Yes, I am. So what is an array made up of? When we say an array, what is an essence of an array? Beautiful. Okay, good. And they're all the same. Type. They're all the, so we have series of elements in a in a in, sequ in a sequential space in memory. And then what does that, what does what do we have to keep track of those arrays? Like when you create when you say integer a five, as he said, we have five integers in the memory. And then what else we need? to be able to have access to these five integers. Indexes, yeah, but how do those indexes go through the, the array? No, how do we access an array? Yeah, but where is that memory location? In there? What did you say? A pointer. In a pointer, what is a pointer's name? But where is that name? Where does that point to? Uh, in static memory? No, but, okay, integer A5. What is the name of pointer here? Oh, A. Thank you. A, so the name of the array. Name of the array holds the address of the array. Are we okay with that? Are we okay with that? Everybody's okay with that? So when we create an array, what we have inside memory is essentially something like this. So what we have inside memory, when we create an array, we have series of stuff in memory. Now, these are, I don't know, let's say like I have, sorry for the lack of artistic values over here, but these are five elements. And then you have one pointer somewhere pointing to those things, correct? So when I say integer A5, this is A, and these are the five integers. Are we okay with this? Are we okay though? Back there, hidden behind those things. Are we okay with these? Are we okay? Are we okay? All right, so we are okay. So if that's the case, what I, so what I want to do, that, what, what, like when we are dealing with, in, with, with arrays in C language, what's the problem with an array? Like what is more tro most troublesome thing in an array when you are working with C? What do you need to be careful about? The size of the array, we don't know what the size of the array is. You will write the size of the array. But if you pass that array from function to function, then the function has no idea what the size of the array is. You as a programmer must remember what the size of the array is, otherwise you may make a mistake. So size of the array is one of the most important things. Another thing that troubles you with arrays? If you, memory, when you say integer A5, you're stuck with five, it cannot be six anymore. And if you say, it, if you don't have enough, you say integer A500, but you only need 100 of them. You are adding extra 400 just in case. So that's not good either. So the two troublesome things about arrays in C language and C++ is that number one, an array doesn't know what is its size. It just doesn't know. That's how it works. You as a programmer need to know how many elements you, you created. Number two, uh, when you have a size with your array, it's stuck and it can't do anything. Okay, so we want to fix that problem. I want to create a class for an integer array to first of all, knows what is the size of the array. Number two, it can change its size when needed automatically. So you put five, when you go 10, it will make itself 10. I want the array to just adjust itself to the size. Or if it's too big, you can say, okay, shrink yourself. 
That's what we want to do. Okay? So, out of that thing that you see on a screen that we have over there, we see a circle over there. That, so, we have, we have this. So, in here, I have, in here, I have integer A5, okay? When you look at that thing, what is identifying the integer? What, what is on the, the identifying the array? A, perfect. A is identifying the array, correct? And five is, is, is its size, correct? That five may change, may become 20, 10, five, so it should be able to change, but I need to know it's five. So to be able to have an integer array that can keep track of where the array is and what the size is, I need two attributes. What is an attribute? When I say attribute, what do I mean? What is the meaning of attribute? Oh, that's with this, yeah, but in general. In C++, when we say attribute, what do we mean? We mean? No, 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 come on. Same as a method. It's not, not um, same as method, you said? Attribute is side by side with method. We call that encapsulation. But what is an attribute? A data members, right? Data members. So with respect to that integer A5, I need two data members, two attributes. One, I need to keep that A somewhere. Two, I need to keep that 5 somewhere to be able to keep track of what I'm having. So number one, I need A. What is the type of A in C? In C? C is? It's an array. What does it mean it's an array? When I say A, what is the type of A? It's a? It's an int array, which means type of A is? What is the type of A? Integer what? Integer p p p pointer. <laughs> A is an integer pointer that is pointing to those five integers. Take a look, that circle thingy that you see over there, that's an integer pointer pointing to the five integers. Are we okay down to this point? Are we okay? So, to be able to have something like this, I need to have two, I need to have two properties, two attributes, two member values, variables for this. One, an integer pointer, that is going to be the data of the array, and the other one is the size. So it's an integer that is the size of the array. Are we okay with this? Obviously, can, can we have a size of minus 5? Can we have? We can't, right? Do you know what an unsigned integer is? Anybody over here doesn't know what is an unsigned integer from IPC? Unsigned? Integers? No? Okay, so leave it at int. I'm not going to bother you with that. Anyway, so integer the size, okay? Forget about it. Integer the size. So what I mean is that you can actually make this unsigned. Then it means it doesn't have any negatives. It means it starts from zero, goes positive. There is no negative in it. You cannot set it to minus five. When you set it to minus five, it's going to be some huge. Okay, how many fingers? Ten. Ten. Starting from zero up to nine. nine. Now, if I, these are all positive, right? If I want to make it sign, what do I do? This has to be zero, or this has to be zero. Then it has to be minus five, minus four, minus three, minus two, minus one, zero. One, two, three, four, correct? So with ten fingers, either I can show from minus five to four, or I can show from zero to nine, correct? It's the exact same thing with integers. Like if you have, uh, what is the smallest integer type? Character, right? Char, character. No, short is 
a little bigger than a carat. CHAR is an, is an integer that can go from 0 to 255 if it's unsigned, but if you make it signed, it becomes minus 128 to positive 127. The positives are always one less. We don't want any negatives over here, so I'll make that unsigned. That's all, OK? So that's my size. So when, so essentially, that's what I have. And I want to create an array with any size that they want. So when they are actually uh, using my uh, uh, array, so let's say I want to have an array, array of five integers. What I would do over here would be something like this. I would say int array, sorry, using namespace, SDDS. So it's going to be int array, let's say i, and I want to be 5. Oh, not like that, not like that, because it's a class, 5. So that will create an array of 5 integers for me. I want to make it that way, OK? Or, yeah, so if I write something like this integer i5, what type of constructor is being used in here to create the i? I am saying int array i5. What type of constructor do I need for that int array? One argument constructor. A one argument constructor, correct? That accepts the size. So that 5 is an unsigned integer. So that's what I need to create. So I'm going to go over here, split the window, and in here I'm going to say I have, I'm going to have an unsigned int size. So that's the size I'm going to get. Immediately, because I know I want the size to change, I want to be able to go up and down, this is going to be dynamic. It's not going to be a regular thing. It's not going to be a, static, a statically allocated memory. It has to be dynamic. Because of that, immediately I will write the destructor to follow rule of 3, which is what? Destructor, copy assignment, the, and uh, copy constructor. So I'm going to create those three. So destructor, copy constructor, And copy assignment, which is int array reference operator equal const int array reference i. You just, this, is this week five or six? Six? Shoot, I cannot have this in a test. But if I had it in a test, that would have been in a, in a beautiful question. Just to tell you, if the name of my class is employee, Write the prototype for rule of three. So you have to create an employee copy constructor, an employee copy assignment, and an employee destructor. OK, remember, rule of three. But anyways, so that's that. So these are the things that I need, OK? And what is the next thing I need to do to, to have to actually uh, work with, uh, with an array? I need to be able to, to have access to its elements, right? So I'm going to create a getter function, a getter function, that returns reference of an integer. And I'm going to call it element. And in this element, I'm going to put an unsigned if I can type unsigned, unsigned it index. So this element method of mine, element function of mine, returns the reference of an element of the array. So if it's the fifth one, it's going to return the fifth one. If it's the second one, it's going to return the second one. So I can have access to it. So I'm going to just implement this and see what happens. Down to this point, I am 
creating first a constructor which creates a dynamic integer array for me inside that, uh, inside that uh, integer array. So it's going to be int array, int array again, and unsigned int size. So because it's a constructor, I know that my m data is null. And I can always put null over here to make sure that in all cases, all cases, m data will be null when the int array is instantiated. So I make that one null, or I could write equal to null. You know both of them, right? Equal to null PTR. Potatoes, potatoes. Oh, let's do it like this this time. It doesn't make any difference, OK? So I'm saying, because I'm initializing the int data to null PTR, no matter how int array is created, it's going to be blank. Anyways, so I want to have an array of size integers. How do I do that? I'm going to say m data is set to new int size. Done. Right? Perfect. So, so the array is created. And I don't need anything else. I just want to see how many integers I have. So how do I create a copy constructor for this? To create a copy constructor, I need to, oh, f f sorry, sorry, I missed something. What did I miss in the constructor? Look at, look at, look at your integer array class. Again, remember, remember the objectives. I want an array, I want an array that, I want an array that knows what is its size and can change its size on demand. The M size. I did not set the M size. So I'm going to do it. So M size is the, <laughs> no, I'm not going to give extra marks, <laughs> but, but good job. OK, so M, I forgot to set the M size. So in here, I'm going to say M size is set to size. So I needed to do that, too. I forgot to do that, OK? Or I could initialize M size right over here. So another way of doing it was to do this. I could, in the initialization area, I could say I want m size to be size. And I, know I don't need to validate it or anything. Why do I need to validate it? Because it's unsigned integer. It's impossible to go negative. You have to speak loudly so I can hear. Go ahead. What was the question? Pardon me? Here, remember I said between the constructor's close bracket and open curly bracket, there is a place we called initialization area. And we said in that initialization area, you can initialize all the attributes of a class. And the syntax for it is a column. You can put a column and put the name of the attribute and initialize it to any value you want. That's the syntax. So this column over here says, I am about to initialize members of my class. Which member I want to initialize? It's the size, m size, and I want to put the value size in it. So when, when it is like this, to explain it further, when it's like this, when the constructor is being called, as the constructor is being called, M size will have some garbage value in it. And then data will get allocated, and the garbage will be overwritten by size in this constructor. But if I do it like this, M size will get created with size in it. It will never have garbage in it. It will create the size, M size, putting the size in it. So the first time M size opens its eyes, there is value size in it. 
That is called initialization. So at no moment of time, M size will have any value other than size. When it gets created, it will have size in it, exactly like here. M data will never have anything other than null before it gets created. It gets initialized. So you can either initialize it over here or you can initialize it over here. Are we OK with that? But the difference is that in the initialization area, you can initialize it with different values. But in the class, the initialization can only be one value that you select what it is and nothing else. Are we OK? All right. So, so if I want to copy this, what do I do? So copy constructor means I already have some integer thingy, and I am creating another integer array, say j, and I'm going to set that one to i, which means it's going to create j out of i. It's going to create j out of i. It's a copy constructor. So what do I need to do? In this copy constructor, I will initialize m size with the size of i. So now, the, va the, the, the size of the current object becomes the size of the object that is actually copying. And then I'm going to say m data will be equal to new int to the size of m size, because m size is already set to the value of size of the other one. So now my data will have an array to the exact size, same size of i. The only thing I need to do is to do a quick copy, i less than m size, and i plus plus, and copy everything from i into the current one. So I have to say uh, m data i will be set to i dot m data i. So first, so if you recall from what we have done last time in our Was it this one? Yeah, I hope so. So, so wh what we have done was this. So this is what we are going to do now. Again, one more time. When I have two classes and I want to do copying between the two, like this, what I first do, I will make sure that the data of this class has the exact same size of the data that I'm copying into. Then I'm going to copy every individual once one by one over there, OK? This, one, this time, is the, the size is being copied afterwards. But that's not what I did. This time, I did it the other way. First, I copied the size, and then it doesn't make any difference. But now, I have a copy. B is a copy of A, as is the current object is a copy of I, OK? So first, I created uh, the array, the, the, the dynamic array, and, I, and then I copied it. For the copy assignment, it's the exact same thing, but the difference is that copy assignment is happening on an already existing class. It's not a brand new class. There might be data in it. So what I need to do is to wipe out the current data. So what I need to do is to say delete M data, wipe out the data, make sure there is nothing in there, then I will do all the copying and stuff that I want to do. Then I'm going to say i dot m size, i dot m size. And at the end, I'm going to say my size is the same size as i. So, and obviously at the end, I'm going to return the object of the current uh, uh, reference of the current object. So, because the current, the, the object that is being assigned, so this is what I have. Yes? Uh, 
Give me line number. Uh, line 11. Line 11? Yeah. Uh-huh. It should be I dot M size, you say? Yeah. Do you see this initialization? Oh, okay. So the initialization is happening beside that. But you're absolutely right. Why not? To make it more descriptive and not put doubt in the mind of the person who is debugging our program, maybe it's a good idea to do it. In this case, it doesn't make any difference. But having this over here will make it more obvious of what we are doing. OK? Sure. But no difference. Because I initialized it before, I didn't need to do that. Are we OK? All right. So again, in this case that we have, so this is copy constructor. If I have over here integer array k, and then I have k is equal to i, this is not uh, a copy constructor anymore. This is copy assignment. OK? Assign copy assignment. OK? And as you see, I don't have a default constructor. So let's say if they, if they didn't mention what the size is, I'm going to give it a size of 1. OK? And I'm not going to allow the size that is minus 1. So in here, I'm going to say if m size is equal to 0, make the m size 1. OK? So my cons the constructor of my array says if somebody is crazy enough to say, I want an array with size of 0, I'm, I'm not going to listen to them. I'm going to create one. <laughs> OK? So that's, there is no fail safe needed in here. Because my array gets created at least with one element. There is no fail safe. This, op, this class is designed not ever be in a, in a, in a fail, fail state. Unless the memory fails, we can have something for that. So when you create it, if memory uh, allocation fails, then automatically M data is going to be null, and that's our fail safe. But the uh, user cannot put this object into a fail state. Only uh, lack of memory can. Okay? So obviously, I need to have a destructor too, and in my destructor, I allocate the allocate exactly as I allocate it, which means I'm going to say delete M data. So. Now my, uh, and obviously I need element two. So for my element, what do I do? I need to return uh, the, the current element that I need to actually gain access to. So I'm going to say um, return mData, and I need to put the index over here, correct? So this reference will be the reference of the element that is being returned. So the element function of mine, member function of mine, can either be at right side of assignment or left side of assignment because it returns the reference of an element. So just take, let's take a look at it. So in here, so if I run this program now to see how it works, if I run the program, this is what's going to happen just to see if it works or not. No output is going to happen over here. I'm just testing. So first, the regular constructor is called. And m data originally becomes 0 first, becomes null first. Then m size will be set to 5. Now it's going to say if m size is 0, which is not set it to 1, so it doesn't do it, allocates 5 integers, and I'm done. I have an array of 5 integers inside the class. Are we okay with this? Now, in here it says, create the class J out of class I. Therefore, the copy constructor will be called. And immediately it copies. As you see, it has garbage in it. But as soon as I do this, of course, that becomes null. And it comes over here. Now it's 5. So M size has the value of 5. 
First, I allocate five integers. Then I'm going to copy everything from the other one in here, one by one. That is five of them. Although the five are garbage, but anyways, it's a copy of garbage. It doesn't make any difference. So now my, uh, what should I call it? My uh, uh, J is a copy of I. Now I'm going to create just an integer array with nothing else. The constructor will be called, and when the constructor is called, obviously size will be set to 1 because that's the default value. One integer will be allocated, and it's done. Now I'm saying I want k to be the same thing as i. This is not a copy constructor anymore. This is assignment, copy assignment. It comes to the copy assignment. First, it deletes that one integer because it's not needed anymore. It's got to get over it. And this k already exists. It's not a brand new class. Therefore, it's going to delete it. And then after deleting that, it's going to create five integers over here and copy all the data from the right one and update the size that is one to five because now it has five and therefore now I have a copy. And when the program ends, the destructor of each one is called one by one, deleting all the values. So now rule of five is applied and my... Uh, Array is created. Obviously, it needs lots of work, but that's step number one. Are we OK with creating this dynamic array now? OK? It doesn't change its size. It doesn't do anything extraordinary. It's just, yes? Oh, yeah, yeah. We didn't do that. Thank you. So. We have to, now we have to take care for two things. Number one, if memory fails, that's one of the things that we need to make sure. So if, uh, if uh, M data is null, that's number one. Number two is uh, um, uh, if it's self-assigned or not. So what I need to do over here, the very first thing I need to do, before doing all these things, I'm going, to create, I'm going to overload the Boolean operator to tell me if the object is in a safe state or not, so I don't have to keep doing null thingy. So in here, I'm going to say Boolean operator, oh, operator Boolean, Boolean const. And in this operator Boolean const of mine, what I will do is this. I'm going to say my object is in a good state, so I have to return true if m data is not null. It means I have something, right? So in here, I'm going to say return m data not be equal to null PTR. So if anybody tests my class for truth or falsehood, this operator will be called returning if the data is null or not. Having that, now I can safely taste, test my object as I go through everything. So the very first thing I need to do is this. I have to say if i and. So this if i test this for a condition. Because it's a Boolean, automatically it jumps to the Boolean operator and tells me if it's null or not. So first of all, if i is valid. And secondly, I have to check to see if it's not a self-copy. And this address is not equal to the address of i. Then do all the copying over here. So if i is valid and it is not a self-copy. Are we OK with this? Are we OK? All right. And all the dynamic stuff that you are doing, so this one will set it automatically because we know the new uh, operator, when it allocates memory, if something goes bad, it's going to return null. So automatically, M data will be null if something goes wrong over here. But at this point, when you are doing the copying, always add the condition to it to make sure that 
m data actually has something. So I'm going to say for i is equal to 0, m data, which means if it's not null, and whatever. So all the things that you do can be done this way. You simply add m data over there to make sure that there is something to copy into and uh, you are not just uh, uh, creating something that is bad. So uh, what else we need to do? Uh, and also we need to check, make sure that i is actually valid and it's not null. So we can actually have that one over there saying uh, if i is valid, do the copying. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to add the condition over here. So I'm going to say if m data is valid and i dot m data is valid and i is less than size, so that takes care of everything. So right now, I'm not going to have null in mine. i is not going to have null in, in, it, in its data and i is going to be less than size, I'll go through them. So any of these conditions go false, no copying will happen, so life is beautiful, I have nothing to worry about. Are we okay? Very good. All right, yes? So the first time data, uh, the line 13. 13. Yeah, the first, like after the address inside the pointer. So if the address is not there, it's zero by C value if zero is false. So it stops. So a rookie person would have written like this. A rookie person who doesn't know the conditions in C language would have said if M data is not equal to null. But we already know that null means false. So we don't bother ourselves with that. Yeah. It makes sure line 12 was a success, and it makes sure that line 12 of I was success when I was created. Both of them. Okay? So now everything's good? Peter, we're good? All right? Okay, so, so now we have this. Let's check the element. Okay? So for the element, um, so let's put this one, up. I'm going to say over here, testing rule of three. So in here, uh, int main. Testing rule of three dot cpp. Okay. Now I'm just going to create that i thingy, and in a loop, I'm going to put stuff in it. So I'm going to say for unsigned int i set to zero i less than 5, or i less than i dot m. Oh, how do I find out what is the size of i? I cannot say m size. I need to know its size. So I, I need to create a public query. A public query, right? So I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to say, uh, what do I do? I'm going to say uh, uh, unsigned size, const, obviously, I'm not changing the object. And in this, un by the way, unsigned and unsigned int are potatoes and potatoes. They're the same. So in here, I'm simply returning m size. <clears throat> so now, as easy as that, my object knows what is its size. I simply say, go up to size, and i++. plus plus. Now I want to set values in here. Let's say I want to put... Uh, uh, I don't know, what do I want to put? Let's say I want to put, um, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 in here. So in here I'm going to say i dot element, and in here I'm going to put i is equal to, that's i plus 1, multiply by 10. So 1 by 1 it's going to go 1. Uh, i plus 1 multiplied by 10. So the first one is 0. It becomes 1 multiplied by 10. It puts the 10 in. How can I put the, the function at left side? How is it possible to put the function at left side? Because I'm returning a reference of 
integer. And that reference is the reference of the array, the array element, you see? So when I have 0 over here, the reference of m data 0 will go up, going out. When I have 1 over here, the reference of m data 1 will, going, will, will be going out. And therefore, because element i becomes the reference of the element, it actually uh, can set it. So when I run the pro, and, I, and I'm going to write another one to write it. So in here, I'm going to say void display int array. And in here, I'm going to say const int array. And in here, I'm going to say uh, reference i. Or for now, let's make a copy. Because we created a copy constructor, right? Let's test our copy constructor. Now in here, I'm going to say the exact same thing. But instead of printing them, I'm going to show the values and put a space between them and go to new line. So that's going to display my array, and I need uh, IO stream over here. Obviously, I need to have using namespace. STD, and now let's walk through and see what happens. So the very first thing is happening over here is that an int array is going to get created. I'm going to go through every single step. I'm not going to uh, skip anything. So it's going to it's going to come come right in. First, initialize the the data to null. Then initializes m size to five. M size is not zero. It creates five integers. A dynamic array of five integers is in M data, and it goes out. Then it says, for I set to zero and I less than size. So as soon as it happens, it goes to size, returns the size that is five, and comes back. Therefore, the outcome of this expression will be true. So it goes in, and now it says, Send me, the index, send me the reference of index 0. So it goes into element, and index is 0, sends the reference of m data 0 out. Therefore, now at left side, I have m data 0. At right side, I have zero, a 1 multiplied by 10. Therefore, it sets it to that value. And then it does it over and over. Now it's 20, 30, 40 and 50, and goes to destructor because I forgot to print. <laughs> OK, let me just come over here and print it. So display, display i. I forgot to display the i. So let's run it right down to this point. So I was right down to this point. It set everything. Now. It's going to send i by value. I'm going to change this over here to integer array, ia. The reason I'm doing that is that when I'm mentioning, I'm not gonna, I, I want to distinguish between the two when I'm walking through it. So when this function is called, what is actually called is this, display int array and then int array i a being set to i. This is how this function is called. Because the argument of this array is initialized to the i int array, the copy constructor will be called to copy i a from a. Therefore, upon call of this function, the copy constructor is called Obviously, because a new object IA is getting created, it's going to be set to null. M size of IA will be set to 5. So uh, 5 integers will be allocated. And one by one, the values will be copied. As you see, this one is now 10. 
and now 20. So one by one it will be copied into that IA object and now it goes through every single element of IA which happens to be the copy of I and because of that because of that this is going to happen so it comes right in gets the size goes through the loop one by one and prints the elements one by one 10 20 30 40 50 is printed goes to new line now the scope of ia is done because of that the destructor of the copy will be called deleting all those five data that was printed and goes back to main function now the main function ends and i5 uh, i's destructor will be called deleting the five elements of that one and we are done are we okay with this hopefully we're okay all right yes Yeah, I just wanted to see you see. There are two reasons. Reason number one, I want you to see uh, copy constructor in action. Number two, the proper way of writing it is like this, correct? So because it is displaying as a good programmer that we are, as good programmers as we are, we, we need to pass a constant <clears throat> reference of IA correct now if you do that can it call the element function no because it's cons it's it's not constant the element function is not constant correct so to fix this problem I can do this I can create another one and make that one const and return a constant reference so this element of mine, unlike the other, why is it giving me an error? Why? Pardon me? No, it should actually work. I'll explain. Let me just do something before that. Okay, let me pause. Yeah, so the problem was that I forgot to put the prototype for it in a class. When I put the prototype, you will see that based on the element, based on the element call of the integer array objects that is const and is not const, the proper function will be called. That's another way of overloading. So it comes in. Now this element is not constant. Because it's not constant, it goes to a function that is non-constant. Okay? Obviously, all of these things will be gone. Then it goes to the display, display array. Oh. Then it goes to display array. And in display array, now I am having a constant reference of IA. So no new object is created, first of all. No copy constructor, nothing will be called because IA is a reference of I. Therefore, it's just a new name for I, but it's a read-only name. Then it comes in here and, and says, I want to call the element. Because IA is constant, it will call the constant version of it. And therefore, now it's safe. Are we okay with this? Are we okay? There is one problem over here. The problem over here is that if somebody goes more than the size of the array, it will crash. I didn't have any fix for that. It's a class. I should be able to enforce that. If in here somebody, instead of AI, if instead of this puts over here 6, it's going to crash because it goes more than the size that I have. 
I can fix that with a very simple operator that we have in C language. So in here, in int array, I'm going to say index. So in here, I'm going to say make this be m size mod index. m size mod index. So what happens over here? The size is 5, correct? What is 5 mod 0? What is the remainder of the division of? Zero. It's 0. Mod 1, it's 1. 5 mod 2 is 2. 5 mod 5. Mo, uh, 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 5 mod 4 is 4, correct? 5 mod 5 is 0, correct? And 5 mod 6 becomes 1 again. So no matter what value you put over here, it's got to be something between 0 and 1, 0 and, zero and m size. Because of that, if somebody goes more and they are not using the size, they are just ruining their own memory and no one else's. Okay? So now to see, that, see what happens over here, now I'm actually going more than five. So I'm going to go six instead. And if I run the program, you will see that it actually loops back and the output of the program will be What did it, what happened? One more time. Mod side. Mm -hmm. Oh, shoot! What am I doing? In index mod size. Wait. <laughs> I am giving you the other way, but I'm doing it this way. So it's the other way. My apologies. It's the, div the, the remainder of the division of 5 that is the size of the thing. So now if I run it, sorry, I put it reverse over there. As you see, it actually looked back and made the first 160, where it was 10. And if I keep going, it's going to keep going. So if I make that 7, it goes back up. So if I make this 7, if I make this 7, it will still stay in there. So 7, now as you see, it's going to be 60, 70, 30, 40. All right? So now, this is safe. It's not going to crash, no matter how crazy I go with it. But it kind of sucks with the, with the syntax over here. AI element, I do not like it. Okay, let's fix that after the break. Record this probably. So the question is, what does this element really return? This element returns the reference of the element in that index. So every time the element is called, the function itself, the function itself, becomes the new name for the element that it's returning. Therefore, it can set, change its values. It's ex if I did something like this, you would have not complained. If I actually did something like this, integer a is 10, then I'll say integer reference r is equal to a. If I say r, c out, r, 10 would be printed, right? Why? Because r is the reference of a. r is the reference of a. And because of that fact, I can even do this. I can say r is 30. And now r, that is reference of a, can stand at left side of the operator. Element that is reference of the element of the array 
can sit at the left side of the assignment for the exact same reason over here. Reference is reference. It could be a function, it could be a, 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 a single reference. It's going to make more sense when I do this. Take a look. Instead of writing elements, so let me just uh, save all this, and I'm going to say over here, int array functional. And in here, I'm going to say Okay, now take a look. I, I, I want to have a new version, that's why I did it that way. <clears throat> Isn't this a function? And we can change functions to operators, right? One of the operators you can overload, ladies and gentlemen, I want your attention. One of the operators you can overload is the index operator. So instead of element, I can say operator index. operator index and I'll go to the function definition over here I'll make this one operator index operator index and how does operator index work so the function call for it in here will be this in here, instead of I element, I'm going to say operator, operator index. Does that make sense? So now it's more comfortable that it's at left side because you don't see the function being called, but it is the same thing, no difference. I could have called this, if I was crazy enough, I, I could have called this operator index i. It's the same. So I could have write, written this or this. If I run this, it works the exact same way. It's the function call. I'm just using the name of the, the, the operator. Why is it giving me an oh, because we have an element. And in here I'm going to put the same thing. Okay, so now if I run it, it works the exact same way. The one that is indexed and the ones that is not, it, it works the exact same way. Right? Not only that, what I can do is this. Yes? Loud, please. No, it is considered the index operator. Indexing operator. It's indexing operator works in its own way. You cannot. <laughs> it is index operator. You can't do anything about it, right? So, so obviously, I'm not going to call it like this because it looks much more beautiful like this. It is actually like a, an array. Not only that, what I can do is this. What I can do, ladies and gentlemen, is this. I can actually check when it's needed, when it's needed to resize. I can see what the data is, occupy enough memory that I want, copy the old values to the new one, delete the old value, and update the size, make the data point to the new one and resize my memory. So now what I can do that makes it even more beautiful is this. I'm going to actually write a function over here called resize to give it a new size. So let's call this like this. I'm going to say uh, void resize uh, unsigned new size. So I'm going to create a function that resizes my array, a method. In that method, what I'm going to do will be this. 
So in this method of mine, in this method of mine, in resize of mine, what I will do is this. First of all, I know that I want these many now. So first of all, I'm going to say if new size, if somebody was gungled enough to actually put over there zero, I'm, I'm going to make it one. So if new size <clears throat> is zero, make it one. First of all, now let's continue. I'm going to say create a temporary thing. I'm going to call it uh, temp, whatever, OK? And this is going to be new int new size, correct? So now I have a new array. All I need to do is to copy the old one to the new one, right? So I'm going to say for integer i unsigned, i set to 0, i less than new size. I don't know which one is bigger. And i less than m size. So whichever is smaller, I'm going to stop at that point. If they are shrinking it, I'm just going to copy the first amount. If they are making it bigger, I'm just going to, I'm going to copy the whole array, and the rest will remain. So whichever comes first, and I'm going to say i++. plus plus. No, I'm going to say 1 by 1 from the old one copy to temp. So I'm going to say m data. So in here, uh, yeah, m, uh, m uh, sorry, temp i will be set to m data i. Obviously, I want m data and temp both have some memory to do in it. So in here, I'm going to say temp and m data. This is the good old things, it's exact same things, to make sure that there is something to actually copy. Anyways, so it copies. So now the old data is copied into temp. Now that I have a copy, I don't need the old data. So I'm going to say delete m data. So the old data is gone. Now I'm going to say, hey, Mr. Pointer, point to temp now. So now the pointer of my class is pointing to the new size with all the information in it. Obviously, I need to set the size to be new size after this. Right? After doing this, the array is resized, correct? I can re use this function of mine, this resize of mine. What I can do is this. Just to show you how it works, take a look. So first of all, let's make this one i size. I don't want to put too many things in here, so i size. OK, so before I display the array, I'm going to say i resize to 8. OK? So now it's 10 to 50, and then three garbage afterwards. When I do it, you will see that it actually gets resized, and this is what's going to get printed. This is the first 50, and these are the three additionals that I added. I made the size from 5 to 8. Or I could do this. I could say i.resize3. Shrink it. So the second printout is going to be a smaller array, and it only prints the first three, and the other two are gone to garbage. So I can resize the size of my array, correct? Everybody's OK with this? Now that I can resize the size of my array, why don't I automatically call it if they pass the index? So I'm going to come in here and, and make my index operator automatic. In here, instead of putting a modulus, the constant one I'm not going to touch. Because if it's constant, I should not resize it. If somebody's passing a constant array, I shouldn't resize anything. But if it's not constant, in here I'm going to say if index is greater than or equal to m size, because if I have 5, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, correct? So if the index is 5 that is equal to size, I still have to resize it, correct? So I'm going to say if index is greater than or equal to size, 
then resize to index plus 1. And then continue. I don't need to mention over here index mod size anymore. So anybody calling this operator of mine, if they go more than the size that it's supposed to be, it automatically adjusts its size to whatever it is. So now in here, I can have, where is the thing? I don't need to say size. I can say over here 30. As it goes through the size, it keeps expanding, and it accommodates the size accordingly. So I'm going to have, <laughs> I made it 30, then I resized it. <laughs> That's the stupidity. <laughs> OK, let's take that resize out. Actually, let it be. Uh, but I'm going to display it beforehand, too. So copy. OK, so now take a look. First, I have 30, then it becomes 8, then it becomes 3. Now, this array of mine, as you see, this array of mine works perfectly for as an array. I can actually use it as an array. I can create an array. And, if you, and I don't need to worry about passing it by address. Or what do I do? If, does it know what the size is? It doesn't matter. I pass this array to any function. It knows what the size is. It knows exactly where it goes. It can traverse through the elements and everything. Very simple and easy. And later on, at the end of the semester, when we learn templates, we're going to learn to actually modify this code so compiler can automatically change this class to any type we want. So I can say array of doubles, array of ints, array of employees. So automatically, the compiler will actually write the code for me out of this logic. That's the end of the semester. OK? So right now, I just so if I want a double, I have to rewrite this thing, change all the ints to double, and I'm done. So you can do many other things. Like you can actually create, for example, assignment operator to an array of integers. And if that assignment happens, uh, you copy all the integer arrays over there. So you can say, if they, if they, assign, if they assign my, so I'm going to say over here, int array operator equal. And I'm going to say, if they assign me to an array of integers, OK? If, if they assign me to an array of integers, uh, int array, not uh, uh, regular array, then I can copy all that array over here. I don't know what the size is. I am assuming when they are giving it, it's the size of my array. So now I can actually do something like this. I can actually write something like, if they said if they did it like that, obviously it's going to fail if they give me too small of an array to copy. But I can simply say over here uh, for unsigned uh, i set to 0, i less than uh, m size, and i plus plus. I don't know what the size of that array is because that's a uh, regular integer array. But I'm going to copy it to my own size. So I'm going to say m data of mine. Or I can actually do it like this. Uh, yeah, m data of mine. m data of mine will be set to, uh, to array i. And return this. So. If I have an array of 30 integers now, if I have an array of 30 integers now, and I have a regular array over here, int my array, or a, and I have, say, 10 over here, and in this 10 arrays I have, I put wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that's 10. So I have an array of 10 integers. What I can do is something like this. 
I can say I is set to A. Because I overloaded the operator, I can even copy the entire array to my array. So to convert uh, uh, C arrays to my own, obviously the length of the array should be smaller than what I have. This one is 30, so it's going to work. So I'm going to say it will work since I is resized to, um, or, or you can actually do this. You can actually say uh, I dot resize 10. So resize my array to 10 and then copy all the arrays that I, I copy everything in here. So now if I do it, the array of mine will actually be a copy of the regular array that I have. So it can work perfectly like that too. As you see, there you go. It's now a copy of the uh, regular array that I have. So this integer array class of mine can be used as a regular array to work with integers comfortably without any worries that uh, um, you don't have enough memory and the array will, size will change. You don't need to. Are we okay with this? Yes. The rest, is, the rest will remain. So I'm going to do it without resize one, once. So, so as you see now, this one is not resized. OK? Obviously, the rest will, will remain what it is. It just copies the first 10. Yeah, the rest is going to be garbage. So, the, so in here, yeah, so, so now. That displays, then it sets, then it resizes, then it's, yeah, exactly. OK. <laughs> if it's greater, it's going to fail. It's going to crash. Of course, because it, does, it has no way to know what is the size of a regular array. That's why we created this class. It is absolutely impossible to know what the size of an array is. Obviously, you can write a function for that matter, so you can actually add more bells and whistles to this. So you can add something like uh, int array set and have a constant integer array and receive a size 2. Array size. And then go through it safely. Give it to the programmer's choice. So in this set of yours, what you will do you just reuse your code and make your life easy, that's all. So in this set of yours, all you need to do is this. You're going to go something like this. You're going to write uh, resize to array size. And this is equal to array. And you're done. And return this. And um, return. Done. OK, so that fixes the problem with different sizes. And so you can, the beauty of writing custom codes like this is that based on the need of your application, you can create anything you want. Obviously, it cannot be an operator because you have two arguments passed to it. But you can do anything you want. Sky is the limit. Create it the way you want, and it's going to act the way you want. Easy breezy. Any questions? So that was kind of a, uh, what shall we call it? Um, uh, uh, gathering up of all the things that we learned with the operators and uh, all the things that you want. That to, we put it together, dynamic memory allocation, rule of three, operators. Together, we created an interray. <clears throat> you can even. Uh, actually, no, that's going to create a conflict. I wanted to say add something else to it, but you can't. <laughs> Forget about it. OK, <clears throat> so yeah. Um, yeah. I don't think there's any, like, anything you want to add to it, you can do. It's, uh, um, it's an integer array. If you are using, um, you need an integer array in your programs, you can use this instead. It works perfectly for it. Does it make any difference?
Questions? Suggestions? Are we good? All right.